Hello ladies and gentlemen, you're watching NDTV. The Congress party has a reason to smile today. In the midst of its allegations of tax terrorism against the center, the income tax department in the Supreme Court said it will not take any coercive steps against the party on tax demands to the tune of approximately 3500 crore because of the general elections. Now, Solicitor General Tushar Mehta stated in the court, and I quote, Since elections is going on, we do not want any problem to arise for any political party. We will not take any coercive steps till the case is heard again on the 24th of July. Now, this comes even as the Congress party has been alleging that the centre with back-to-back -back IT notices has unfairly targeted uh, the Congress party's bank accounts, uh, in fact, stifling its capacity to buy train tickets for its campaign workers. Now, is this an assurance of a level playing field to the opposition by the center now is this about following rules and keeping your books in order and how is this going to play out politically that is a that is the question we ask uh, tonight uh, uh, before we get into this discussion let me go across to my colleague uh, sunil prabhu who tracks the congress and also the supreme court for us sunil it's a good day for the congress how is the party uh, feeling and uh, how are they preparing for this well, uh, two points. I don't think uh, it's, it's in a sense, it's not really a breather because they have uh, petitioned the Supreme Court. They went to the Supreme Court against the Delhi High Court's 2016 order. And it's in that context uh, that the uh, uh, Solicitor General on behalf of the income tax says uh, that we won't do anything till the next hearing, that is July 24th. Uh, they could have, uh, you know, pushed for the stay, but because the income tax lawyer, in this case, the Solicitor General, has made that statement, uh, they will wait till the 24th of July where they are contesting their entire grounds whether, you know, in the last uh, six days or so, uh, they have raised a demand for 3,500 crores. Does this still bring in a level playing field? No, it doesn't. Uh, they are bringing up the other issue of the 135 crores which was in the accounts, which has been usurped. Uh, they are raising that uh, demand uh, uh, with the uh, uh, and will be challenging that uh, once again in the Supreme Court as well as, of course, other host of other matters which will be tagged along. So it's not entirely a completely a breather because if you will understand that every pie matters, you are up against the BJP who has got those electoral bonds as, as the party alleges. Uh, and as you saw in the rally yesterday, the themselves uh, saying that they have usurped a maximum amount of money uh, for, uh, you know, benefits uh, uh, for various uh, acts of omission and commission of their governance. And it's in that context that the Congress is saying that it is not yet a level playing field. Right. Uh, so not complete relief for the Congress party yet. Thank you, Sunil Prabhu, for joining us with, with those details. We also have Congress leader and lawyer Vivek uh, Tankha with us. He was part of the Congress party's defense today in the court. Thank you, Mr. Tankha, for joining us. Now, is this, uh, you know, some sort of a reprieve for your party? But in retrospect, do you think your party could have handled this better, considering the government has maintained that this was about filing returns on time? No, this was the best way to handle because we, we were not at fault at any stage. We were, react, we were reacting to actions. First action was on 13th of February when they seized our accounts, put a lien on it, and then they wanted to withdraw money. So we got it stopped for a few days uh, for the ITA team. If you heard us at length, dismissed our plea. It didn't take a to except our 80 percent plea, which is something which is offered to everybody. Even if you don't want to give, they force you to give 20 percent. We were, we were helpless. We have to bow before the court. And then we went to high court. No, high court didn't accept our plea. We tried our best. I was there, Manu was there, we were all there. And, but we didn't stop fighting. We kept fighting. We, we, because we know that somewhere laws with us. Somewhere Somewhere the elections were being impaired. And you, know, you can't have a democracy with the largest single party is, is disabled from fighting that election. Okay. Uh, Mr. Tanka, do you also think that at some point the ECI could have intervened as some of this action was initiated after the MCC was put in place? I tell you, frankly speaking, we didn't, we didn't expect it came like a bonanza to us. We thought we, thought we would get some order. Maybe wanting to get an order, uh, getting a stay of the judgment which has been hurting us for all these years. And rightly so also, if there had been stay, there would have been nothing wrong in it. Because that's an old judgment, after that so much water has flown. But uh, the government itself, because of the pressure, 
the pressure of the court, the pressure of the people, the pressure of political parties. Now, decided that enough is enough. I think let's put our gloves down. Let the courts handle this issue. Yes, sir. So you didn't expect this today, but uh, do you think that the MCC was in place today? Do you think the ECI could have intervened at some point? I'm not sure how much election commission can ask uh, judicial forum, judicial bodies, uh, okay. not working, because these are judicial orders. Like when you go to a high court, now a high court is not subject to an uh, election jurisdiction. They will not interfere in some matter in which election commission may have ordered something or directed something. But but they but whether they would sustain their hands or help us is something which High Court has to take its own rule. I we were the ones who went to ITAT. We said stop this demand, give us the 50% from us, like you do it with all SSDs, and we will fight. But they didn't share us, they gave us <laughs> and also recovered the entire amount, by the way, Masuda. They recovered the entire amount. They were in right. some to take the money from us, you can't imagine. I mean, they took 65 crores in one go, 55 crores in one go, 20 crores in one, one go. I mean, the moment we would lose the battle, they would take the money. Right. But also, Mr. Thanka, your party has been talking about a level playing field. This is what Rahul Gandhi spoke at um, uh, the Ram Leela Maidan yesterday. How is this uh, and how this IT action has actually obstructed that? Now, do you finally see a sense of fair play? So this is one of the disadvantages. I mean, we managed to overcome this. But BJP on a, on, on a larger platform, by, by, by the way, has used this machinery, misused it, but did not use. Whether they or ED or CBI and the way it appear of agencies in the people, the way they made people cross over, cross over, all that is now uh, hurting the Indian democracy and the spirit of democracy. The larger issue will still be before the people of India whether we want this to be a last. Right. Thank you, Mr. Tanka, for joining us on this broadcast. Uh, joining me now is Dr. Syed Zafar Islam, who's a national spokesperson of the BJP. We have Amitabh Tiwari, political strategist, and we also have Kushbu Jain, who is a Supreme, a Supreme Court advocate. Thank you, all of you, for uh, uh, joining me on this show. Uh, uh, over to you, uh, Dr. Islam. You know, Tushar Mehta today, who's the SG, said that the department had willingly made this concession to avoid any coercive measure in view of uh, the general elections. Now, he made, made it a point to state that uh, this leave has been allowed to the Congress party despite the fact that tax demands were not strictly relatable to the appeals pending in the Supreme Court. Why do you think that the government, you know, uh, uh, took in some ways a step back here and how do you, how do you see this? No, there is no step back. The fact that uh, Congress has violated, I think I have heard Mr. Tanka, I am sure Mr. Tanka, Tanka is not uh, <coughs> narrating the truth. The truth is that uh, they have violated uh, Section 13A. They have not complied with the, the mandatory compliance uh, requirement, which uh, the income tax demands when you seek for exemption. Secondly, uh, they have also, uh, the pro recovery process was initiated because they didn't comply and they didn't respond. And then they had, uh, they had uh, not, their appeal was dismissed by CITA, the tribunal, as well as uh, by the Honorable High Court. Then the, re the recovery process under 26.3 was initiated by the uh, uh, income tax department, which is which is again a mandatory ob an obligation on, on their part to uh, comply with once uh, the demand is there and the tax uh, the liability needs to be collected from the the uh, taxpayers. Third is that uh, these people, uh, of course, they uh, the income tax has many documents in their position when they read it to some uh, uh, people and their fonts were uh, so many documents which suggest that Congress used a lot of cash and uh, they didn't, they didn't uh, report uh, those incomes to the authorities. Also, the 520, the observation of the Honorable High Court that 520 crore mm -hmm. has been completely escaped from uh, uh, the attention of the authorities but that is the income which they didn't report. 
So those things and then the, the re-assessment re, uh, proceedings was initiated under 153C, which was also important because they, there are so many things which uh, uh, needed, to be under, uh, needed to be added uh, as, as a tax liability for the Congress. And that is something where they appealed to the Honorable High Court. Hmm. Uh, but I, High Court, uh, again, uh, their writ was dismissed on 24th of March and 28th of March. Right. Because the Congress party was simply sleeping because this came up in 2023. And since then they were sleeping, but when only then realized that they are not above the law, this government is very different. Right. There's a governance model of this government is that everybody is at par okay. in the eyes of the law. Hmm. So Congress uh, realized that uh, there, there will be no leeway. So they appealed to the Honorable High Court and their, their uh, petition or writ petition was dismissed. So they, they are, they, their, their tax liability is there and that is why that demand... So this is about violation payment, of rules, uh, right? So I'll, I'll come back to you uh, with party, this level, no. level playing field but allegation. Now, uh, yes, sir. No, but now they were complaining about level playing field. Now they have to see, they wanted to somehow hide their defeat because they know they are staring defeat. So they thought that it is better to say something that there is no level playing field. So now okay. they have also, this is also concession has been given. It is a temporary relief. I must tell you it's a temporary, there is no stay order. It's okay, a temporary right. relief. The, the High Court or the Supreme Court will hear this on so 24th there is no of stay July, order, there is but temporary, temporary relief. relief, so they let can't me, complain let me take about this, their uh, defeat. Let me take this question to Mr. Tiwari. Mr. Tiwari, you know, like uh, Dr. Islam also quoted some numbers. Now, trouble has been mounting for the Congress party because fresh notices have been issued uh, from the tax income tax department. And this was raising a tax demand of almost 1,745 crore. And this is from 2014 to 2017. But then there's also this latest notice and the income tax department has raised is the total demand of 3,567 crore from the Congress. Now, is there any precedent for any opposition party uh, in the country receiving such notices in the past? And, you know, how realistic is it to assume that the Congress party that has ruled the country for several years is actually facing a severe financial crunch, as its leaders are saying? See, essentially, the, uh, there is no precedence for such a huge amount of income tax notices running into 3,000 crores on any political party. There is also an angle that the political parties are not uh, are exempt from income tax per se. However, these things have already been debated and discussed in, in the High Court judgments with respect to this case and we have come to such a point. Now we have to see that uh, the Congress party uh, has been the least recipient of the electoral bonds and what that is the biggest worry for the party because we've seen that the, even the regional parties which are in power actually have got significant amounts of money. So the Congress party being out of power has led to a decline in their donations. They, they would have had right. the maximum donations when they were in power. So the amount of donations which is received by political parties is correlated to how many states or uh, the uh, uh, Lok Sabha you have the number of MPs and that's why perhaps it has not received significant funding. Right. However, we've also seen that the high-profile laws of Congress party come in debates and discuss on a lot of issues which the common mind does not understand, but they're not able to prove their point in the High Court or the Supreme Courts or the IT tribunals, which have rejected now and again the, the, the points put forth by the Congress party. So now it is a good decision. I think the IT department also has uh, shown magnanimity and uh, it, it's a mature decision. Mm -hmm. And it uh, somehow neutralizes the Congress party's allegation of uh, not having a level playing field during the general elections. Right. Mr. Jain, you know, if you look at the uh, submissions that were made during the hearing today, the Congress lawyer, Abhishek Manu Singhvi, said that, you know, it's a political party, not a profit-making organization. He also raised the issue that Dr. Islam has been talking about, that Section 13A of the IT Act provided tax exemption to political parties. Where do you think the Congress and the center could have done better in this uh, controversy? Okay, to understand all these things, one has to understand that political parties are under a statutory obligation to furnish return of income for each assessment year so that they become eligible under the uh, uh, conditions which have been laid down under Section 13A of the, uh, uh, of, the, of the law. And if a political party is in a violation of that 
condition which is laid down in 13a that is providing for uh, furnishing of uh, a return of income uh, uh, in that scenario you cannot take an advantage of uh, 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 the ex the exemption which is being given to the political parties under section 13a that's one the second aspect that comes is that one has to look into that why 13a was been introduced 13a was been introduced uh, to bring in transparency and accountability i'm repeating that word because if one has to understand that is to put it across a large sum of money is being uh, uh, received by the political parties expenditures are done during the elections so to bring in that transparency that how much money is coming and that large sum is is spent on what to have that accountability one has to file uh, 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 returns and get that being filed in the income tax uh, uh, department in a specific year so that voters like you and me and all of us understand that where and how things have been happening that accountability and transparency come in play now if you're at a fault of that uh, 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 you cannot go on uh, you know one cannot uh, uh, failure to furnish this returns uh, uh, is practically can become a criminal offense if i have to put it across if you look into section mm. 276 cc of the income tax act it says that failure to furnish a return of income has been made up criminal uh, offense punishable under that section mm. and there is no leeway that can be given to the political parties because this is a mandatory provision uh, of the law that okay. says yeah Go. yes uh, please finish yes it's, it's interesting yeah. yes huh. Okay, so 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 failure to furnish a return income, as I was saying, it, it's it's it can become a criminal offense if you say if you if you abstain yourself from doing so. But in this scenario, they have been given an exemption, and you can't claim that exemption if you have failed yourself in providing that detail. This is nothing but if I have to put it in a very, uh, I'm not attacking the party, but it can lead to an aspect that you're trying to hide a black money or okay. you're trying to take an advantage. I'm not uh, uh, exactly putting in there, but to understand, one has to look into if you're taking an uh, taking an. Uh, 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 um, uh, benefit of an exemption, you have to comply with the conditions of that exemption. Okay, so these are rules and this is about violation of rules and the price that you have to pay when you violate them. Dr. Islam, you know, the Congress party and others in the Ramdila Maidan yesterday, you know, raised these allegations of tax terrorism with so many political leaders arrested and also this IT notices. You know, do you think that, uh, you know, this, this will also keep youth and good but cautious people away from politics or do you think that the BJP and the Prime Minister's position that this is a fight against corruption and this is about cleansing India of corruption uh, will, will, some, will be something that will find uh, uh, more takers? See, Sorry, is it question? Dr. Islam, thing. yes. That, uh, the authorities, the income tax, uh, the income tax authority, they are independent agencies. They are just pursuing based on the evidence, facts they have. If they need to add some tax, then they need to have furnish all the details to the taxpayers. They have to provide all the what is important for the principle of national justice. And that is something which they have done in case of Congress as well. Having said that, what is important for all of us to realize that in, it is the responsibility of the income tax department to send notices when they see that there is a uh, uh, there is a case for tax to be added which has been somehow either intentionally or unintentionally not been paid by the by the taxpayers in this case in the case of congress party it is very clearly intentional hiding income i mean it is not a family's income it is the political parties which is receiving donation needs to be uh, uh, reported to authorities and you, uh, if you are seeking for exemption if you are not seeking for exemption then of course you are liable mm. to pay tax and that is something which is important. Well, those who gathered in the uh, uh, Ram Leela Maidan, in fact, uh, there were five, more, not more than 8,000 people, 5,000 were the uh, Aam Aadmi Karakarta and all the other political parties Karakarta. So there was no receptiveness in the eyes of the people because right. the people also feel that if they can get notice from the income tax authorities, why can't these political parties? They are nobody's above the law. Congress felt that it's their fifth time to... Uh, rule this country, but now it's Raj Shahi ka time khatam ho gaya. It's a it's a Modi's era. Yeah. A, 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 a rule is for everyone, and everyone is at par in the eyes of the law. Mr. Tiwari, would you, you like to respond crime, to that? You know this whole course, narrative that you know Prajatantra you. versus Tana Shahi. Uh, you know when the Congress uh, Congress party gets IT notices back to back, or when Hemant Sorain or Arvind Kejriwal are arrested. This whole argument or the this debate and narrative that you know it is a it's it's a fight between the corrupt and non-corrupt. What do you think actually? You know uh, people on the ground uh, uh, would be feeling is, is this an inter, is this an issue that is actually uh, you know something that people relate to 
करप्शन ऑलवेज हैज बीन अमंग द टॉप फाइव इश्यूज इन लोकसभा इलेक्शंस हाउएवर आई थिंक इट डज वर्क वेल फॉर द ऑपोजिशन इन 2014 इट इट डिड वर्क वेरी वेल फॉर द ऑपोजिशन फॉर एनी इनकंबेंट टू वन टू 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 टेक बेनिफिट ऑफ दिस इट हैज टू शो एक्शन एंड दैट्स व्हाट परहैप्स द बीजेपी बिलीव्स दैट दिस ईडी अरेस्ट एटसेट्रा विल बी कंस्ट्रूड एज एक्शन हाउएवर देयर इज अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन एक्शन एंड कन्विक्शन हाउएवर दैट्स अ थिन लाइन ऑफ डिफरेंस व्हिच मेनी पीपल परहैप्स मे नॉट बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड आल्सो so both the bjp as well as the opposition is speaking to the gallery as in they are trying to sell the narrative to their own voters who are non partisan or rather who are partisan voters loyal voters it all depends upon how this issue pans out with the neutral or the swing voters and we'll have to wait uh, uh, to 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 see how this issue pans out uh, a recent sea voter survey does show that uh, this these ed rs are being Uh, taken by certain section of people as a misuse of central agencies and i think perhaps this is one of the reasons as well why today the government has taken a lighter position in the uh, supreme court wherein they have said that they would take the action or relevant action after the uh, dr islam uh, would you say that the government has taken a lighter position sir the government has taken no position government is only giving yeah. this flexibility to the authorities to pursue as per the evidence they have what we have done today is just they were they were complaining that there is no level playing field because they were staring defeat as i said earlier they know that they will not even get double digit number or triple digit number put together as an nda so that's why they are making this kind of complaints but now they 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 will not be able to escape with another uh, uh, reason they will have to accept their defeat because people of india will give vote for the uh, for modi because they know that their this governance model will only do benefit to them and the congress party instead of uh, uh, crying in front of public they at least will have now till let the election be over then we will fight the case in the court right the government will fight the cause in the court Mr. Jain, you know, in the last few days, uh, we have seen this electoral bonds uh, debate actually put the spotlight on how political parties are funded, and then, of course, this whole IT notices issue also uh, led to a lot of discussions on how uh, even political parties need to maintain their books and accounts in order. What do you think are the safeguards in existing law, and you know, what are the provisions that safeguard you know the rights of opposition parties at the same time, uh, you know, enable uh, the government and you know government departments to go after the corrupt? uh see uh, again i would say uh, maintaining a uh, transparency and accountability is paramount when it comes to healthy democracy but at the same time one has to understand that everything has to go with the following the due process and procedure and if that due process and procedure has not been followed you always have a course uh, to uh, challenge the same in the court and you know get a get an order uh, 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 in your favor but at the same time you have to understand all these provisions which we are talking about including the electoral bond and including what we are talking here today which was been introduced uh, long back and whole idea of introducing uh, 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 13a was to bring in that transparency and to evade that black money aspect that keeps on coming in the in the in the political uh, election scenario but you will have to understand that this is not just here it has been done in the past and uh, it is practically mandatory for income tax authority for that matter any other authority to put in motion the statutory machinery against defaulting political parties it can be anybody it can be congress it can be bjp it can be regional parties it can be uh, uh, you know whenever whoever is in the in the in the uh, opposition or in the in the power but it it cannot have a different stance for different parties or somebody in power or not in power one uh, second it is not disputed that there has been notices which has been issued uh, by the income tax authority under section 142 1 uh, uh, against the defaulting political parties in the past including bjp including congress and including all others you would see that there have been enough and more of judgments and en- enough and more of uh, uh, when this was introduced in 1970 it was been looked into 1971 it was been looked into that none of the parties were punishing except few regional parties parties uh, none of them have been punishing these details and that's where it will be observed by the court that it is mandatory they are under under a statutory obligation these authorities to issue notices uh, 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 to these political parties if they are 
uh, defaulting in any of such manners. Okay, if last word uh, from Mr. Tiwari and also Dr. Islam. Do you finally think that it's a fair, it's it's a level playing field, and these allegations of fair play? Do you think they are fair in some respects, Mr. Tiwari? No, essentially, I think it's a See, it's a good uh, uh, level order. playing field is always there. Okay, Dr. Islam, uh, continue. I'll come to Mr. Tiwari next. Yes. Do I have to speak or? Uh, Dr. Islam, please yeah, continue. So I'll, it, I'll come to Mr. Tiwari next. It was always a level playing field, but yes, now, sir. yeah, yeah. So that's uh, that's what I'm saying. That it was always a level playing field for everyone. Now they they were creeping about about this income tax issue. It is behind uh, them for the time being. At least, at least temporary relief is there. After the election, this will be uh, this will again come up in the court. Right. But having said that, Congress knows it very well that they have violated the income tax guidelines. It, uh, they are on a wrong foot. They are just misleading the people. They are trying to take some sympathy, garner sympathy from the people of this great country. But they, the people are not receptive. And that the fact that yesterday's uh, so-called rally was a, is a failure, big failure on, their, uh, on, right. on uh, the part of... Uh, the Mahagadbandan or the uh, Indi Gadbandan, they yes. could not. Uh, this is the very last word from you, sir. Would you like? Would you agree with Dr. Islam claiming. on this? And also, uh, you know, uh, is it finally finally fair play, or do you think that this issue is a dead issue now? You know, this Congress party being targeted uh, selectively, and uh, you know, finances of the opposition party being stifled. See, it's a breather for the Congress party, and it significantly neutralizes their allegations that they have been unfairly targeted, at least for the elections. Uh, they can uh, uh, use the amount in their accounts because it's a lien and not a freezing of accounts and they can uh, 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 pursue their election campaigns with peace without worrying for this three and a half thousand crore notice so it it, it brings parity at least in their even 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 in their words Right. Thank you all of you for joining me on this show. So temporary relief for the Congress party even as it raises allegations of tax terrorism against the government. Of course, this issue is going to play out uh, politically in the run-up to 2024 elections. That's all we have for you in this show. Uh, more news and updates on the other side of this break.